see that the white man has no mythos. His mythos is separated from his life. Whereas in your mythos, you lived your mythos. See, our mythos is the true history of humanity. He writes a history in order to, uh, to maintain a tradition. Whereas we have been taught by nature, we have been taught by, our, by the gods of the forces, how to act so that we can strike a balance. Now, as long as that balance stays, we learn the personalities of all the gods. We don't have to put that god into Captain America. We already got our Ungalugalu and what do you call it? And each one of them lived as presences that affected our daily lives. Not in a comic book where we could go over there and you got to do school and a job and then come and read a comic. No, we were direct representatives as well as participants in the lives of those that we call our heroes and heroes. These people are living secondhand vicariously and what they're doing is instead of giving you the... the, the the, 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 as an initiate, the degree of initiation necessary for you to become Captain America, they would rather you live a vicarious life. The same way that instead of giving you the degrees of Christ, they want you to worship a Christ. So the comic book is for you to vicariously again focus your intent and your attention into a thing and give that life. Now they even give it more life by filling up the screen. To make a, a human being do what it is that you could do. To do what you could do. You could do what the Hulk does, what, what Cyclops does, what um, Wolverine and all of them does, what even some of the more obscure ones like, um, uh, what's the one that was, no not Magneto, I'm, that's not obscure. Apocalypse, that was a brother, he's a brother. Yeah, he's from Africa. The first mutant. Yeah, was the first mutant. You gotta read Apocalypse's story, man. Oh yeah, go check out Apocalypse. Because he's supposed to be the one that they're gonna introduce you to the Throughout the course of history, there have been periods when mankind made rapid advances. And then there are those other, much more numerous times that remain rather unnoticed as transitory periods. Mankind as we currently know it might radically change. Something new is emerging. While people have talked about global peace, the end of history, and the disappearance of ideologies, an army of scientists around the world has continued working in their laboratories. The impact of this work is now slowly surfacing. Technology is about to take over the torch of history and will guide us to a new era. The disparate activities of scientists in the fields of genetics, robotics, artificial intelligence, bionics, and nanotechnology seem to be converging towards one goal, to transcend human limits. It will lead us inexorably towards a transhuman age, an age when more evolved species will leave mankind behind as a fossil in history.
acceleration factor and by 1750 we had four Jesus. The next doubling took 150 years and by 1900 we had eight Jesus. The next doubling only took 50 years and by 1950 we had 16 Jesus. By 1960 in only 10 years we had 32 Jesus. By 1967 we had 64 Jesus and by 1973 128 Jesus and the latest estimate I've seen by Dr. Jacques Valley, a uh, computer scientist is that knowledge is doubling every year but I heard that oh about five six years ago I saw something on the net recently somebody estimated it's doubling about twice a year now obviously if we're experiencing more change now in a year than we previously experienced in a thousand years we can propagate that trend into the future and see that a day will come when we will experience more change in an hour than we have experienced in the past 20, 30,000 years a situation like that is unimaginable so we call it uh, a singularity a place where the normal rules of modeling break down uh, modern religions have anticipated the singularity by calling it uh, the eschaton or the end of time technological communities have anticipated the singularity by uh, thinking in terms of artificial intelligences or something like that in whatever form it takes we seem to be on the cusp of a dramatic evolutionary leap into a deeper order of complexity than biology or biology plus culture has been able to provide. We're on the brink of something. But the age of Aquarius is the same idea of opening a golden door of the treasures of the earth or of the heavens and that the treasures of the heavens would pour down upon the people which is the same as the Bible that says that God would pour down his spirit upon the people so you have in the constellations even the heavens signs that indicate that we're in the time of a tremendous change so according 